Guten Tag everybody, this is Stefan from CNC Kitchen and in this video I want to talk about the E3D silicone sock which is now available for purchase and how you can perform the PID tuning for your um, 3D printer hot end in order to get the temperatures right again. The silicone socks can now be purchased in E3D's online store for a reasonable price of £3.50. Um, the silicone sock is suitable for different nozzle sizes from 0.25 millimeters up to uh, 0.8 millimeters. The online store also links to a blog post which was created by the E3D guys where they explain a little bit about the development process of the SOC and how it can, benef how it can be beneficial for your prints. I actually got my first silicone sock when I purchased an E3D V6 hot end as an upgrade for my Mendel 90. And I had been using it with lots of success on, on that machine. Just before Christmas I got my Prusa i3 Mark II, uh, which is also fitted with an E3D V6 hot end, so I thought the, the silicone sock can also be beneficial for this printer because I noticed during all of my prints that the thermal stability in the hot end wasn't really, really good. So just as you can see in the video, when my Prusa i3 is heating up, you get lots of oscillations about around the target temperature, which is in the range of plus minus five centigrade. Anyways, in order to fit the sock on your uh, Prusa i3 Mark II, you need to use an X-Acto knife to cut part of the silicone away because otherwise the wires which go to the heater are in the way. I have already performed this on uh, my silicone sock and unfortunately I don't have a spare one around at the moment to show you how it works but I am quite sure that you can figure that out on your own. In the next step you remove the fan shroud from the part cooling fan just to get a little bit more clearance and to make it easier to work on your hot end when you want to install the sock. In the front, the heater block is quite close to the next printed part where the fan is mounted. Um, at that location, you need to slide the sock in from one side and then it fits quite snugly over the heater block. It looks a little bit tricky, but in the end, it's actually not too hard. Um, but still, there are some corners where the sock, well, at least um, on, on my machine, didn't perfectly fit over the hot end, but that actually wasn't too bad. After that, just install the fan shroud again and you're more or less ready to go. As a last step, just make sure that the silicone sock isn't in the way when you are printing. So in my case, one corner is hanging down a little bit, but um, it's not hanging down as far as uh, there would be any problems. So the silicone sock will not interfere with any of the printed parts. Since we changed the thermal behavior of our hot end, we need to run the auto PID tuning, which is um, provided by the Marlin firmware. In order to do that, just open pronto face or octoprint in my case and type in the command which will start the PID tuning process. M303 is the command for the auto PID tuning. E0 means that the PID tuning will be run on extruder Z number zero. S210 means that the target temperature is set to 210 degrees Celsius. You can change this value to your usually used printing temperature. I usually print with uh, PLA, so 210 is um, the best temperature in my case. C8 means that the tuning process will be running for eight times. Um, running it more than just once will give you better results. There is a video by Tom Salander which talks a little bit more in details um, about the PID tuning process. When the command is sent to the printer, the hot end will heat up to the specified temperature and the shape of the heating curve will then determine the parameters for your PID controller. 
When the process is finished, Marlon will present to you the PID values which it has calculated. These parameters can now be used to put into your machine configuration in order to get a better thermal behavior of your hot end. There are now several ways to adjust these values. Um, at first, you could go into your configuration file and then alter those values and send the firmware back to your printer. Unfortunately, I didn't get the Prusa i3 firmware to compile, so I did not use this method. Another way would be to use the serial monitor and then save the values to the EEPROM of your control board. Unfortunately, on the Prusa i3, this option is deactivated, so I couldn't use this method as well. The method which I have chosen now is actually to always adjust the PID values before each print just um, by adjusting the G-code file, which I will show you now for Simplify 3D and Slicer. In Simplify 3D, open your process settings and go to the scripts tab. I'm now just adding a new line in my starting script where the PID settings, which we just got from the auto PID tuning, will be set before each print. When you have done that, just update your profile and with the next G code export, um, the new PID settings will be put onto your machine. In Slicer, it's just as simple. Go into your print setting tabs, um, select the custom G-code option, and then again, just add a new line where you set the PID values using the M301 command. Save your profile and you're all set. This right here is the temperature graph for the next print, which I performed. And you can see that uh, now I finally have total stable temperatures. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. Consider subscribing and take a look at the filament strength series, which I will be starting soon.